Hello everybody and welcome to my next video. Yeah, I ripped that off too. You can uh, see Bob Wells' channel if you want to hear that again. He's got quite a bit of good content on his channel. I learned quite a bit from him. Anyway, today we're going to look further into um, RV Trip Wizard as I uh, plot and plan my next two stops for three nights in a rest area. And then uh, after one night there, I get to a uh, winery, uh, which is part of Boondockers Welcome. And I'll talk more about that with the uh, supporting pictures and video. This is a snippet from a map on RV Trip Wizard <clears throat> showing the route I have planned just beyond to the north of um, Kansas City. And oh, by the way, never drive through the middle of Kansas City. It's not worth it. So uh, what you see here is a blue dot and a red dot. The blue dot is a rest area and the red dot is a winery that I found on Boondockers Welcome. In the next image, I'll show you the app that I use uh, to find the rest areas. Here you see the welcome page for the interstate rest areas. If you Google for interstate rest areas, you'll surely find uh, this free uh, website <clears throat> with commercials. And it has nothing to do with the Department of Transportation. They say that all over the place. But it is kind of handy because the maps that I'll show you next tell you where all of the uh, rest areas are and breaks them down by interstate, by northbound, eastbound, southbound, and westbound. So you can narrow it down and zoom in. And uh, from there, it takes you to uh, Google Maps uh, to show you very clearly the satellite images of the rest area that you're looking at. This is the map on interstate rest areas showing you uh, the rest areas in blue dots. This shows I-35 going northbound, which is the route I'm taking or sticking close to, that is I-35. And you'll see several blue dots just north of Kansas City. The closest one there to Kansas City is where I stayed. So this map helped me find it, tell me a little bit about it. And in the next image, you'll see how I can zoom in on that website to a Google map, which shows me clearly the layout of the entire rest area. This satellite image shows the rest area in detail. The restrooms and other facilities like the vending machines are in the center and those spokes are all sidewalks going uh, into the area uh, where the bathrooms are. You can clearly see the truck parking spaces and there's only nine of them which is surprising because it looks like there's about 50 to maybe 100 parking spaces for cars. So I saw this and I thought, <clears throat> it'll be really safe. I can park even though my 17-foot rig um, will take up a couple of parking spots. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll be safe and away from the trucks. You don't want to park with the trucks. They don't like that. Even if you look like a cargo trailer, you might look like a camper and uh, you're messing with their income and their profession 
So uh, they tend to frown on that. I've heard stories of people who have stayed at truck stops and rest areas with the trucks and the truck drivers slightly damage their vehicles by making a wide turn and, and, and as their end of their truck comes around, it moves over just enough that they can lightly graze the side of an expensive RV and do quite a bit of damage actually, especially something as fragile as a slide out uh, could very easily get the windows broken and get knocked off of its tracks, which would leave you in a pretty serious position. <clears throat> so just don't take up parking spaces that the trucks need. And like I said, it's their job. They need that place to sleep uh, in order to do their job. So what I did is I picked a spot where the cars were. Uh, and this is a Google Maps image, which is very similar to the last one, but it kind of verified what the area looks like, hopefully still looks like. <clears throat> Things change over the months and years. So um, I've seen entire rest areas disappear, um, as some states are doing now to uh, force people to go to the RV parks and the truckers to go to the uh, big chain truck stops. Anyway, so I picked a spot on the uh, very uh, southeast corner and my truck and trailer took up, I think, three, maybe four parking spaces, but there were only two or three other cars there when I parked and overnight there were never many more than that but during the night the trucks started driving by and I found that peculiar and I, I looked out the window and there's one parked right across the, the road from me in front of what must have been a dozen car parking spots and uh, I got out and took a look around and on the the other side of this triangle there were three or four trucks over there so i imagine there were nine trucks parked in the truck parking area and there's no other place for them to go so uh, trucks seem to be driving through all night long and there's little i could do about that so um <clears throat> i just had to sleep through it and it really wasn't that bad um this is boondocking, so there's no amenities other than the bathroom and hot running water. But um, I'm self-contained in my camper, including a composting toilet and a fresh water and a sink and so on. So I'm, I'm uh, well taken care of. So uh, one tip, don't compete with the trucks for the long parking spaces. Now a quick intro to Boondockers Welcome. I invite you to visit their website uh, before you sign up. And um, there is a nominal fee to become a member and take advantage of the facilities they provide. Uh, so you can find out best by logging on and taking a look at what they have to offer. I, I think it's well worth the uh, I think it was $39 a year, even though you may only use it for two or three weeks out of the year. I, I used it for three nights and camped for free and had some very um, nice experiences with uh, a few folks on my, on my stays. Uh, so that, that's more than paid for itself uh, just in the three nights that I stayed with um, my hosts for free. This application, this website, this organization is a lot like Harvest Hosts. And I invite you to take a look at what they have to offer as well for about the same price. 
and they do pretty much the same thing. In fact, I stayed at a winery and I wouldn't be surprised if Harvest Hosts uh, was also one of the facilities that they uh, take part in. And it costs about the same and it's just a really good idea. The Harvest Hosts tend to uh, get compensated by people buying some of their products, be it wine or uh, beer or whatever that particular host has to offer. In this case, the Boondockers Welcome Host becomes uh, entitled to stay for free at other um, Boondockers Welcome Host sites without paying the annual fee, so they, they get compensated a little bit, but of course it, it wouldn't be uh, unheard of for you to actually tip the uh, host a little bit, if you, especially if they offer you a hookup to electricity or water, and some of them even have um, dump stations or sewer hookups, so it's, it's, it's quite nice. The, the hosts, I think, in, in my experience so far, basically are people who are, are veers themselves. And not only do they like to stay with other like-minded RVers, but they like to invite them onto their property. And this winery had room for at least a, a dozen vehicles, and you'll see that in the next picture. This is a picture of the winery that I stayed at, but I didn't take this picture. I took this off of the uh, Boondockers Welcome website. Uh, they typically show uh, at least a few pictures of the host site, so you get a good idea of uh, what it looks like. This winery has, um, uh, it invites uh, bands to play and they have a music festival uh, once a year so be careful you won't be you won't want to stay there during that weekend or that week whenever they have it I think it's in July in the summer anyway um, <clears throat> there was only one other rig while I was there and I parked on the gravel in the parking lot because rain was predicted and they didn't mind that. They were perfectly fine with it. And the next day I went into the winery and, and uh, ha had a great sampling of half a dozen wines and talked to the, um, the server there, and she was very nice. There was only one other person there in the middle of the afternoon, and we talked about wine for a while, and I ended up buying a case. So it was a reasonable price, but I'm, I'm sure that the winery was happy for whatever profit they made. So no, I didn't get my drone out and take this aerial photograph of this, this uh, parking area, but it was very quiet and, and I enjoyed it very much. They actually had a few customers the Friday night that I stopped there but um, they, didn't, they didn't bother me and uh, they weren't bothered that I was there. So <clears throat> everybody got along just fine. It was fun. I can highly recommend Boondockers Welcome. Well, that's it for today. Stay tuned. I will be going to Ledges State Park in Iowa where I stayed three days on my way to my sister's driveway and another three days on my way back to Texas. So I have plenty of footage and it is by far the favorite park that I was at all the way from Texas to Minnesota and back. I have plenty of footage of some of the spectacular views that Ledges State Park has to offer. So leave a comment if you have any questions about how I camp, 
how I plan to camp and how I make these YouTube videos. Bye for now.